Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. All right, you guys have some questions. Let's see if we can give some answers. Brian, you've been watching the uh, live YouTube feed as well as questions from live.perillo.com and from uh, the other Nomies. Uh, what do we got? There was one that is pretty much an opinion-based one, but it is for graphics cards, NVIDIA versus AMD. Well, it depends on what you want to do with it. Exactly. Uh, Kevin, since you seem to know about that, could you elaborate on that? Because I'm not very well endowed with that information. I'm kind of elaborate, but I don't really know too much. But I know the some of the, the ATR, ATI cards are better for like video editing with running a preview window and the timeline window at the same time. But while gaming, you want to go with NVIDIA because it's, it does a little bit better with the game. I don't know why, but that's but what I heard. To me, they, I don't know. I, if you put me in front of a computer and you asked me what video card it was, I couldn't tell you. I really, I couldn't tell the difference. To me, they're neck and neck. Basically. I, These two companies are constantly trading back and forth, you know, who, who has the better hardware and whatnot. Um, just keep in mind, though, that NVIDIA, is they set a standard, and they say, okay, well, this is the GeForce 55, or 550 standard, and then all the manufacturers build their devices around that standard. So it may not be so much NVIDIA versus uh, AMD or ATI. It may be ASUS versus MSI or, or you know, something along those lines. Yeah, this is an impossible question. question to ask, or answer, I should say. Yeah, Brian, go ahead. Uh, here's one. What are your thoughts on the Facebook timeline? Uh, I have to say, it is really kind of nice to be able to see very clearly what happened in a uh, chronological aspect. Because before, I know it was somewhat confusing, especially when like comments and stuff were posted. Now you, at least, you get to see what happens when you know that for a fact. Yeah, I kind of covered it last week, and I'm mixed. Oh, Kim, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no problem. I, I was just gonna say. Uh, for people who are non-techies, it's very confusing. Uh, for people who are techie, we like it. The, the best thing I would say is being able to change the cover or the top of your uh, timeline uh, personal page. Otherwise, um, it can get confusing, uh, but it's nice being able to find things. I think people are always quick to. I think oh, I think people are always really quick to judge. Just, as soon as Facebook changes anything. And I think if people just give it time, I mean, I've been using it for quite a while, and it is definitely uh, the, the right way to go. Um, you know, you, how you can see back through your whole timeline and where you graduated and kids or engagement and stuff like that, it's definitely the right way to go. My biggest... Hello? My biggest criticism is the back and forth along the timeline makes it very hard to read down any given uh, timeline. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Uh, there was one question from yesterday uh, about, specifically this one was for when to buy a Mac, but I think this is more of a general technology question, or at least the answer should be. There is no quote unquote great or right time to buy into technology. Buy it for your use case and what you want it to do, because inevitably the next week, the next month, it's going to change, and there's going to be, ooh, the next best thing, which is always relative. You know, the best time to buy a, if, a Mac, and I, I, other people may have different perspectives, but I'd say right after they announce a new one, uh, or potentially, and then you could potentially buy a last generation uh, and save a lot of money uh, in the process and still get a good computer. There's nothing wrong with a last generation machine, but I would say the same thing for a PC. I actually agree with that. Um, I think the best time to buy a Mac was right after they came out with the Thunderbolt technology and we had that kind of lull right before they rolled out the Thunderbolt iMacs and you still had the last generation iMacs that were there. And both are great computers. It's just that little difference in the two. And, and shopping in the refurb store is sometimes a really great way of doing it as well. If you're looking to save a few bucks, you can get a you know, a last generation or sometimes, you know, current generation for a very reduced price and still get Apple's warranty. And there's also Decide.com, which can help you to determine, you know, whether or not uh, a price drop is expected for a particular item. Um, we've, we've got a couple blog posts about that on LockerNM already. Okay, next question. 
Unless we have no uh, next question. <laughs> high quality game recordings. Uh, is there any right way to do that, really? I mean, it's pretty much either you get a graphics type card that can do an export, which is kind of glitchy, or you set up a camera point at the screen, which then you have to deal with light reflections, that type of thing. Um, depending on what it is, if it's a console gaming, I know the HUPOG HD PVR is like the gamer's choice for game console recording. If Fraps is good. Yeah, I was going to yeah, recommend Fraps. Fraps. That's for desktop. Well, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the choice of gamers, if I'm not mistaken, as far as uh, recording what happens. Actually, gamers have started to move over to a new program called DX Tori, which is like Fraps, but you don't get as many issues with it. I'm not sure. I've never played with DX Tori, but that's what most of the gamers on YouTube are starting to switch over to. So I realize we're getting a lot of, this, like in these question and answers that we've done with uh, Nomi's, not just today, but in the past, we get a lot of common questions, and trust me, they start to get repetitive, as I'm sure everyone understands. One question that one of these guys keeps asking, and I've already given my answer, uh, will you get the PSP Vita? No way in hell is my answer. Yeah, I actually answered that one as well on my perspective. There was one, um, if you guys remember yesterday, there was about intros and video, and there's a subsequent question about uh, background music. And I personally took a two-year class for TV video through my high school with a uh, certified teacher. And the rule of thumb basically is, if you want to do background music, if you're like, let's say, going through a convention or something, if it has lyrics, you should not be able to understand the lyrics, but just have a very faint tune to keep the mind busy. Hmm. Yeah, someone was asking if uh, David DeFranco is a Nomi, and... He is. Do you think iOS is old? Asks Lego Film Kid on YouTube, guys. Uh, do you think iOS is old? No, I don't. I think it's, I think it's getting good. a it's getting a bit long in the tooth. Uh, you know, certainly the iPhone experience that I had the first time I used an iPhone, and today it's pretty much the same. And I think that's fine because. There's not a lot of relearning, but I, I do think that, you know, Apple can and will continue to change uh, how iOS works. Uh, you know, n now that uh, they've, they haven't really embraced the jailbreaking community, but they've made a few hires from the jailbreaking community, and that speaks volumes to me. Yeah, I, I have to say, this is one of the things that I do, this is like one of the definite answers you can say for iOS versus Android. Android, now this is a generality, it likes to change things up iOS, virtually speaking, most things that you learn once, you're not going to have to relearn later on. So that's a little something you have to consider. Uh, and then, again, you know, everyone has their own preference on that. But that is something you might want to consider getting a new phone. Well, you know, the, the iOS, uh, with it being old, I mean, I think that's actually part of its appeal for me. Uh, it's almost like the Nintendo formula of the A and B button that never really changes on everything Nintendo produces. Um, it's 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 familiar, um, and though Apple does uh, add things, it's it's not fast enough to a point where they're on the cutting edge. But when they do that, add things, it, it typically works, and uh, that's part of the appeal for me. And if you want the pedantic answer to that question, yes, iOS is old. It's five years old. Uh, here's a, a neat take on that uh, through YouTube. Uh, people say that Android OS is better because they release upgrades faster or sooner than iOS. That's actually yes and no because of the fact that it's actually the carriers that control that upgrade aspect. And I would say that, it, you know, with that part, it really doesn't matter that much. Both of them release in their own way. And... I'd rather have a more stable OS, and certainly I I highly disagree with the way that Android OS upgrades are carried out. I think that it's very flaky, and when you get an Android phone, this is one of the things that I hate, is the fact that, is that going to be upgraded at all? You know, hardware issues and stuff like that, so that is something you deeply have to consider when getting an Android phone. And I that was Lance Seidman, by the way. He's a, an outstanding part of our community. And I think as well, like people like as like geeks might in, enjoy um, constant updates, but your mum might not enjoy that. They might they want something that's familiar to them. Okay, let's see uh, about maybe one more question. Uh, 
this one, and I believe Chris, you have answered this multiple times in the past week. The best starter camera or ways to start through YouTube. It honestly at first does not matter. Just get the content out there and find your niche of what you want to do. Uh, as Chris has said, audio matters more. So even if you want to put a few text for something, just make the content A, interesting, and B, original. Even if you're covering something that Engadget has covered, give your opinion. Give your, you know, your experiences with the technology, and that will make it good. Yeah, that's exactly well, what I'd say. And the best camera sometimes is the one that you have in your pocket, so... Yes, totally agreed. The yeah, iPhone totally. camera is just amazing for, you know, just start a video and people who can't afford really expensive cameras. But uh, the Audio-Technica microphone that Chris uses is actually really cheap and very good quality mic. All right. Uh, Chris, I, Go ahead. I don't want to put you on the spot, but there has been a question the past week and a half about uh, Gnome Deck specifically with Gnomies. I know you mentioned this vaguely once. So I thought you might want to give a little iteration on that, possibly. Uh, sure. You know, if, if, you know, Gnomies has been going like gangbusters. And by the way, if you want to join us in TeamSpeak like this for future Q&A sessions or in the chat room, just head over to Gnomies.com. It's easy to do. Anybody can join no matter really where, what country you're from. Um, the uh, uh, the future of Gnome Decks, I think, is going to be virtual. I'm I'm, I don't have the exact, like, Eureka, this is how we're going to do it, but, it, you know, I want to line up a cavalcade of speakers, you know, throughout a, a day, and basically allow Nomies to get into Gnome decks, uh, you know, it's, it's a part of their, you know, account subscription, and anybody who wasn't a Nomi could join in, in the Gnome decks virtual conference by paying an additional fee. They'd be smarter in how we're going to price it, they'd be smarter to become a Nomi, than just, you know, paying for that virtual conference outright. Uh, but, you know, the hope would be uh, to, you know, continue to find really interesting stories and good content and just do it virtually. Uh, but the idea of an in-person thing in an official way, it's it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of strain, and I don't know if I really want to put myself through that again. I, I'd rather spend a lot of time and attention on uh, you know building the community, uh, you know, and uh, you know still continuing down the path with the Gnome Dex brand, and specifically giving more value to people who do become you know Gnomies. Yeah, I'd like to agree with that. It was actually always my dream throughout high school to go to Gnome Dex, but I have to say you have to look at it this way: with Gnome Dex, the old way, you had to get Chris had to get a speaker through a specific day and a specific location. If we do it virtually, there's a chance that we can get a speaker that may not have been able to do that. You know, they can just come there for an hour, and that content otherwise would not be available. So it's a trade-off, but I think it's going to be a really good thing. And I'm going to do my best to, you know, find some really good people that, you know, line up. I would say I, I'm, I'm gunning for each name you'd be recognized or you'd want to recognize, uh, or certainly some people who I believe have uh, rather fantastic stories that deserve to be shared. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. It will certainly be tied into uh, Nomies, but I'll certainly make it also accessible for people who aren't uh, registered Nomies but still would like to see uh, the, the content as it plays out at least live. Yes, you too, Wicket. Uh, all right, so uh, thanks, everybody, for answering questions. Uh, if you want to uh, be a part of this again, all you have to do is head over to nomies.com. Uh, a lot more to offer than just this part of our uh, sub-community, of the big greater community, including taking these questions and answers on live.perillo.com. That's happening pretty much any time, day or night. Uh, so uh, thanks, everybody, for either asking questions or answering.